What's up, YouTube? It's Axie Leader here with my game one of the WCCW or World Class Champions War. Now, this is another unannounced project for you guys. Um, and if you're wondering what the World Class Champions War is, it's an idea that I had in combination with PC Reviver in which we bring together a bunch of draft leagues that we have in common. Like, a whole bunch of our friends have been in the community for a while and they know each other through various leagues and have brought each other into all of these various leagues being mainly the CPL, the WCBL, and the PICA. We also have a wildcard team um, just because we needed an even 20 people but the idea is that each league has five representatives and each week one league faces another and you basically we rank ourselves we seed ourselves one through five one plays one two plays two and so on anyway i'm representing the cpl and i've my team we together decided that i would be the fourth seed and in week one the cpl faced the pica and their fourth seed is Bob and Fishy. Bob has been a good friend of mine for a while. And he's just like, yeah, he's just a super nice dude. He says just some of the most random stuff sometimes, but it's absolutely hilarious. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this game. I haven't played Bob yet, ever, like, before, before this. Oh, um, one thing I forgot to mention is that there are four draft pools in this league. Each team has their own draft pool, so it's very likely you'll be facing mons that you have. Each player gets nine Pokemon, and we did a free draft style. So every single team is absolutely busted because we all collaborated in order to not snipe each other because we're trying to work as a team here, right? So, Bob's team is going to pop up on the screen right here, and I think I'll put mine over here. So you can see exactly what we are working with. I'll give you guys a second to look at that. But, without further ado, we're gonna hop into the six I chose to bring. I didn't I didn't make notes for this league, so it's just gonna be a pretty quick team builder. We've got the defensive scissor as our as our primary Bulu check. Um HP Fire Bulu was used in season seven of the GBA, I believe, so it's not unknown. But I still think this scissor is gonna do a pretty good job. Toxic for the Arcanine and then standard defensive scissor moves. Nice and bulky. Zapdos with Discharge, Roost, U-Turn, HP, Ice, nice and standard. Well, kind of standard. It's not... Usually you see Roost 3 attacks in OU, right? And maybe like faster, but I wanted to be more bulky again for that Tapu Bulu. And I didn't need Heat Wave on this Zapdos, so I put U-Turn. We have an Assault Vest Tangrowth for attacks, obviously. Um, without any EVs, apparently. Good thing that didn't end up coming into play. We have literally copy-pasted standard Vincoon. The speed actually works. I don't remember what it's for, but it's, um... Let's see. Oh, it might be for base 80s, like the Hoopa. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's it. And, uh... Another pretty standard set is the sub protect dragon dance zygarde right here and who you can't bring two sub protect mons without a toxic spikes mon so we've got toxic spikes 
three physical attacks, a muscle band, Adam, and Greninja. Torrent. Alright, that's the team. Let's get right into the game. So, Bob has brought the Arcanine, the Crobat, the Alola Ninetales, the Agron, the Tapu Bulu, and the Hoopa. So a pretty threatening team overall. But I like the way my team is looking in this matchup. This is a long battle, so forgive me if I make some mistakes in my narration. There's a lot of turns that look very similar. So, I'm going to lead right off with that Greninja, seeing if I can get my Toxic Spikes up right away as he leads Bulu. So I'm going to get the heck out of there and go hard into Scizor as he wood hammers and that does absolutely nothing. I'm gonna double into Zygarde on his Arcanine switch in right here giving me some nice momentum as I can throw off a thousand arrows and just get a little bit of chip damage on the top of Bulu. I'm gonna protect right here to stall at the grassy terrain as he wood hammers and I'm going... wait <laughs> I think I missed something there. Sorry, guys. Thousand arrows on the Bulu. Protect. Style at the train. Yeah, yeah. He goes into Arcanine to maybe catch the Scizor, but I'm gonna go into Zapdos as a middle ground play and then back into Greninja. As he switches into Ninetales, which is a nice play right here. But I'm just going to stay in and get my Toxic Spike up because I think he's going to overpredict and try to. Um, yeah, try to catch something. Like. Uh, basically, he. I, Moonblast was the play that attacked what's in front of him. Either way, I got up one layer of T Spike right here. And, um, yeah, I, and because I lived that, I may even be able to get a second one. But I'm actually just going to go hard to Scizor on the Moon Blast. And this gives me an opportunity to Mega Evolve and go for a Bullet Punch, or a Roost, rather, actually. So, I can't stay on this thing, I'm gonna go into Zygarde most likely, which was, uh, this is probably the worst play I made during this game, letting Zygarde get burnt right here, will o -Wisp was super obvious. I should've just gone in, into, into one of my water types. Bulu's gonna come out as I go for the sub. The way he's played this Bulu so far, I'm pretty sure it's choice. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure I even calced the damage in the game and knew by now. But, I don't know. I, I don't remember at this point. I'm going to sub up, see what he decides to do. Just waste some turns of terrain. As he catches me with the double into Arcanine as I go Scizor on the Bulu. And this forces me back into something like a Greninja. He Flare Blitzes and gets the burn. But, as long as he's not packing the E-Speed, I get another T-Spike right here, which is super nice. He's going to go Crobat, and I'm praying to, to God that this thing does not have a Defog, but even if he does, he does not go for it, instead choosing to U-Turn, knock out my Greninja, that's totally fine, it got out both layers of T-Spikes, it did what it had to do. I'm going to sub up with my Suicune on the Aggron right here, and then go right for the Scald instead of Calm Minding in case this thing has a Roar, and I'm gonna try to set up calm mines now but he's got that taunt infiltrator no not infiltrator taunt just goes through sub um because obviously the new turn would have gone through sub Did it? oh wait no yeah no he is infiltrator okay um there you go so that that's that series of plays um, I'm gonna scald the Bula and I'm gonna stay in right here because with the grassy terrain I'm gonna be able to get up to full HP actually. I don't really mind this thing recovering health. I still have all three of my designated checks to it. So now I'm gonna switch out 
I know he's locked into a grass type move. This is the freest Scizor of my life. And now I can bullet punch. I'm never actually going to end up clicking Toxic because the Arcanine was poisoned by the T-Spike. And Aggron right here gives me an opportunity to go back into my Suicune and get up another substitute, I would think. Yeah. Hoopa comes out trying to get some big damage off. But I'm never going to protect versus this thing, I'm only, and I, I know I'm faster. So I'm only ever going to sub or attack the Hoopa, because a Z-move or Hyperspace Fury is going to just break the protection. So, um, yeah, he's got, he switches out right there. Um, I don't, I'm not really sure what was up with that play. He just kind of got damage off on his Hoopa for nothing. And the Crobat's going to come out. We're going to go through this whole taunt cycle again. And he's going to get me down to half, actually. So, I'm taunted. I can just go for a few Scalds versus the Hoopa. I'm still not sure what he's trying to do with it. He just breaks the sub with a Psy Shock. But I'm faster. I can still just sub again. And he decides to throw off the Z move right here. So, sort of wasted your Z move there. And Hoopa goes down to Toxic. So... I'm going to count that as a kill for Greninger or a Suicune. They both put in work, both my water types doing exactly what I want to this game. Bulu is going to come out as I go for the Protect, seeing what he locks himself into, and I'm going to go into my... Oh, wait. Okay, I just sub up, just trying to outspeed, and the Ninetales comes out, and this finally gives me a chance to set up my comp mines. Ninetales is toxic. I think everything that can be poisoned has been poisoned in this game, so now I can defog at any point as soon as I get my Scizor in, but this Ninetales is giving me an opportunity to get up multiple comp mines, so I'm going to try to go for it. The Grassy Terrain is going to go away before the Hail, so actually no, that, that's bad for me. <laughs> um... Yeah, now I just start attacking, the Bula comes back out as soon as the grassy terrain goes away, that makes sense. And at the amount of boosts I have, this Bulu is in a range of two Scalds. But I'm actually going to switch out here into Scizor, because I know he's just going to try to sack the Bulu. And I can get rid of these rocks to make life easier for my Zapdos in the future. And I know that Suicune can come in later, so I'm not too worried about uh, about killing the Bulu. I'd actually rather keep it alive, because it's a free switch in for three of three of my mons if ever I just to just to be disruptive versus his team and stuff like the Agron, like the Arcanine. They don't have the most reliable recovery. You'll see the Arcanine go for Morning Sun right here, but um. Yeah, he only has eight of those, right? So, I I really don't mind just getting damage off on those kind of Pokemon. Ninetales is going to come back out and finally reveal that Aurora Veil as I start setting up Calm Minds again. And now I can just stall out some of his Pokemon. With pressure, with, and like just damage things with Scald. Eventually... Like I said, the Crobat, the Arcanine, and the Aggron, they're all just going to go down to my attacks. Suicune is putting in the finest, even in its final moments, it is able to clutch out a burn on that Crobat for me, making it the least of my worries, really. And I'm going to go... I'm not going to go down yet because of the leftovers, I don't think. So he's going to sack off the Ninetales right here. Yeah, the hail plus the burn actually, like, makes me lose 6% per turn, I think. Like, with the leftovers, anyway. So, I go zap, I get rid of the rocks and then I can go zap dose. Because pretty much everything is in range. As soon as that Ninetales dies, I claim a kill here, I knew that. 
Um, but now the Ninetales is going to have to come out. And as soon as this Ninetales goes down, Zapdos is going to be, f is well not faster than everything, but at least faster than, uh, it's going to be able to kill everything because it's going to be able to live a hit from the Arcanine, outspeed and two hit KO the Aggron, and kill the Crobat. So that's my game plan at this point. I'm going to see what I can do with Zygarde first. I'm just going to leave it in at this point, I think. Because that Ninetales is so low, I'm going to try to set up and just like scout this Aggron. Oh yeah, I'm going to scout for the Ice Punch, actually. That was my play, because I wanted to see if I could win with Zapdos right here. Or if I would need to get this thing a little lower. So he does reveal the Ice Punch and break my sub. So I'm going to go into Scizor and Roost up. I'm going to basically force him into a position where he like has to switch in his Aggron multiple times. And take enough damage from my Zygarde to the point where Zapdos can just one-shot it instead of having to two-shot it. So that's one less hit that Zapdos has to take. Now, it only has to take a resisted hit from the Crobat as its only move is most likely Brave Bird because he's revealed Taunt, Haze, U-Turn, I think. And, and potentially a uh, Flare Blitz from Arcanine, but I might even be faster. And I'm probably faster because this thing's set makes it look like it's a bulky Arcanine. So that's what I'm going for right now. The close combat play, it's kind of the best attack. He had to hit me, but he's but this is also this is working out for me because now he has to sack the nine tails. So again, even better for my Zapdos to win. And I believe that's what I'm gonna do as soon as I get the chance. Uh, I'm just gonna go hard into Zapdos to preserve a differential, I think. And yeah, I don't think I have to switch out at this point. I'm just gonna discharge and I win the game barring some freeze shenanigans. Because uh, I might have made Zapdos faster than Zygarde, in which case I know I outspeed this. Anyway, that, yeah, I don't have to... Actually, because Zygarde is still alive, even if he killed the Zapdos, it wasn't such a big deal. Like, if he Flare Blitz right there, Morning Sun was not the right play. Because of the hail, I don't know if he realized that. That 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 morning, that hail cut Morning Sun's recovery like that. But, yeah, he should have just attacked my Zapdos, and then even still Zygarde would have, even my burn Zygarde, would have been able to win the game at that point. But, we're gonna be able to take this game... 4 0 oh, GG to Bob and Fishy. And I think we won this week. I'm gonna throw up the little statistic right here. You guys are gonna get to see my team. You guys are gonna get to see the PICA team. And yeah, that's what we're looking at. Next time, uh, we're taking on. We're taking on Wizard Warrior CB from the WCBL. I lost to him in, in CPL Season 3, so I'm looking for some revenge right there. I played all these games, by the way, already. So, uh, yeah, these aren't spoilers or anything. These aren't, it's not like I'm revealing my prep. But, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Please retweet, leave a like, and maybe even subscribe, but until next time, later guys.